Hey everybody and welcome back to No Awkward Question. My name is Adrian, and I'm a women's health nurse practitioner and this is uh, my platform where I can do a little bit more long form content about sexual health, women's health, and whatever other questions you might find awkward that we in my profession really really don't. So um, I had I've had a couple of different people reach out to me about making their visit more comfortable if they have a history of trauma or if pelvic exams or gynecologist visits or just medical stuff in general is really tough for them. So uh, I have a nice long list of things that we'll go over to make a pelvic exam or make going to the gynecologist or just going to see a medical provider more comfortable. So before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and leave comments below. If you think there was anything that I missed or anything that's been really helpful for you, I would love to hear about it. So let's get started. First thing, it sounds so silly. Write down or say somewhere on your phone the address and the phone number of the clinic that you're going to go to. It sounds so silly. But we have it all the time where patients are calling because they're like, wait, um, which, which location, if your clinic has multiple locations, you show up to the wrong one? That's so stressful. Or you don't know who to call if you're running late. So just like save the number on your phone, write down the address. I am super old school and I still have a paper planner and I love it. I will never get rid of it. <laughs> and that would be helpful. Okay, appointment at this time with this provider's name at this address and on this phone number. So you don't have that panicked moment when you're already kind of nervous and then you have to panic and like look on your phone if you have service to be like, oh, am I going to the right place? Save yourself the stress. Just write down the address and the phone number so you're good to go. <sighs> the next one is parking. I know, again, this sounds so silly and so basic, but we have panicked patients all the time. <laughs> so if you're in a smaller or rural, more rural area, you're maybe like, I just pull into the parking lot and I walk in, Adrian. I think that, I think that's going to be okay. But I personally now work in a city um, or urban setting where we have patients call all the time and say, I'm running late. I've been circling the block for like 10, 15 minutes. I can't find any street parking. There's no street parking. Where do I park? Girl, good luck. There's no street parking. <laughs> there's none. You're going to get towed. So there's, you know, where I work, there's a ton of parking garages, but are you parked in the right one? And where, where do you get your ticket? Where do you validate? All that information is on our website, but, you know, if you didn't read that, that's okay. But then people are calling panicked. Oh my gosh, where do I go? And then someone's trying to give you directions over the phone. It's so stressful. So keep your blood pressure nice and low. And one thing to wrap all of that in a bow to make it easier would be just call and make your appointment. Just call. I know it's easiest to make it online. It takes 12 seconds, but call and make your appointment and you can make sure you have the address right, the phone number right, and that you know where to park. Or if you're taking public transportation or someone else is driving you, just that stuff should be the last thing on your mind on a day that might already be stressful for you. You might get all that stuff sorted, no problem. So next things, timing your appointment. So this has to work with like what's gonna work best for you mentally. First thing is when you call to make your appointment, if you're going in for a gynecologist appointment, you can ask them. Hey, for my appointment, is it okay if I'm on my period when I come in for my appointment? For most of the time, yeah, it's going to be totally okay, but there might be an exam or a procedure that you're going to schedule and you can't be on your period. Well, now, because you didn't know that, you have to come back for another appointment. So I say just ask, can I be on my menstrual cycle? Can I be on my period during this appointment? And they'll let you know so we can time it the best we can. The other thing is, there's kind of two boats of people. Some people are like, I need to schedule my appointment at the beginning of the, the, beginning of the day so I don't have time to chicken out. 
Not saying if you cancel or can't come, you're chickening out, but that's just how some people phrase it for themselves, you know. I, I've got to do it first thing so I can just rip it off like a band-aid and get it done. And one other way to look at that is like you feel really accomplished, like first thing. You get it done in the morning, very accomplished, you're done for the day. You don't have to do any more adult things that day, you're done. The other option would be, okay, I know that um, it's gonna work better for me to do it in the afternoon or early evening because I'm gonna need time to like get myself together. I'm gonna need time to relax. And after I'm done with my appointment, I wanna just be able to go home and relax and be done. So figuring out mentally which one of those is gonna work better for you. One more thing with timing your appointment. Ask for extra time. Typically, if you're coming in for a routine exam or a consultation, um, those are preset times. It's either a 15 or a 20 minute slot, maybe even less. So you can ask, it's another benefit of calling to make your appointment. You can ask that scheduler, am I in a 15 or 20 minute slot? Okay, um, is it an option for me to be scheduled for a longer amount of time? I know I've had a really hard time with exams in the past. Would it be possible instead of a 15 minute slot for me to have a 20 or 30 minute slot? Um, I'm gonna have a lot of questions. Um, I wanna address a few different concerns. Can I have a longer slot? And they might say, yeah, sure, thanks for letting us know. They book a lot of time. Or they might say, oh, actually, we can only do a 15 minute slot. We can either do your annual exam or focus on problems. Which one do you wanna do? And while it's inconvenient to come in for multiple appointments, sometimes that's good for just your mental health. Like, okay, let's knock out one thing at a time, go slow and ease our way in so that it's not too overwhelming. And you can kind of get the vibe of the clinic and like, okay, do I wanna to continue to have care here? So some pros and some cons. One other thing that you can ask when you call to make your appointment is what type of provider they have. And of course you can get that on a website too, potentially, but um, are you seeing a doctor like an MD or a DO? Are you seeing a nurse practitioner, a nurse midwife, a physician's assistant? Um, and then depending on your state, you know, the scopes of practice are different. Maybe you're coming in for a surgical consultation, but they scheduled you with a nurse practitioner. Okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, well maybe they say, oh no, Everybody sees our nurse practitioner first to do your intake, um, to do your annual exam, and then you'll talk to the doctor at your second visit. On a stressful day, you don't want to be surprised by who the heck is walking in that room. So knowing who your provider is going to be, kind of what their credentials are, and then if you prefer male or female providers, whatever makes you feel safer. I feel like this is such, such a double-edged sword because some patients are like, you know, I definitely want a female provider. Some patients don't care that much. Um, this is like one of the few times I feel really bad for guys because in women's health, you know, I have a lot of patients who are like, no, I, I don't want to see a male provider. Um, and I've worked with some really, really good male providers who are incredibly, incredibly patient and kind and gentle and are incredibly respectful and do a great job. So like I personally, I'm open to seeing male providers. I've had really great experiences. Um, and I've had not great experiences with female providers, but just because I say that and they say, oh, be open to a male provider. You have to go at your own pace. You have to do what works best for you. So some of that can be, you know, going from word of mouth from other people, you know, reviews online, you know, take those with a grain of salt, but you know, there might, you might be surprised where you say, I only want to see a doctor. And then you have a really good experience with a nurse practitioner or a PA, or I only want to see women, but then you have a really good experience with a male provider. It, it's, it's hard. There's some trial and error involved in finding a provider that works for you. I wish it was, you know, I wish it was easier, but that's, that's my little soapbox of like, Hey, maybe be open to seeing different providers. Cause you never know what will work best for you. Another thing that you can ask about is bringing a guest. Often, most providers offices don't mind if you have one guest, but you can ask. What I always tell people is like, feel free to bring a guest. 
just don't bring a posse because we've had people bring like their entire family and there's like not enough room in the waiting room or there's not enough room in the exam room. They want to bring everybody back with them. Typically one guest is fine. <laughs> if you want somebody to hold your hand, you want somebody to drive you there, drive you home, someone to just accompany you home to make sure that you're doing okay afterwards, um, someone to distract you. The biggest thing, I can make a whole video on finding the right support person. But if you're gonna bring a guest, a support person, that's what they should be. And that's their only job. And what will benefit you is going over your expectations for them before the appointment. I just need you to drop me off and pick me up. I just need you to come with me and wait in the lobby. I want you to come back to the room with me. I want you to hold my hand. I want you to distract me with music or cute pictures of dogs on Instagram, whatever. If they don't know the expectation, they could really let you down. They're trying to distract you and you're like, no, just be quiet. Like I can't be distracted right now or vice versa. And this should go without saying, but it should be someone who's pretty sensitive to your situation and is not trying to make the appointment about them. It happens all the time, all the time. It's like a total Michael Scott moment of like, like can I just put my foot in the, in the CT? hand machine real quick and white, like happens all the time. So choose wisely. Another consideration would be not having an exam, the first appointment. You can always do an appointment to establish care, um, to do a consultation, just to talk, but not do an actual physical exam. Now, I understand this is not convenient because it would be easier to get everything done all in one day. You don't have to come back for multiple appointments, but if you have the luxury of time where you could have a consultation, talk with the provider, establish care, maybe do some blood work, maybe do a urine culture or a self swab or no pokes, no prods, no nothing. You just want to talk about birth control. You just want to talk about some symptoms you've been having. You say, I don't want an exam that day. That's fine. That's actually totally fine. Um, but that could, allow you to have some confidence in the uh, in the office that you know you're hey I'm showing up to the right place this was a chill day I've got good vibes I'm gonna keep coming back here great or you didn't love it now you can go get a second opinion somewhere else and then the second visit you have a true physical exam that's reasonable but just letting someone know that first so that hey you know I don't, I don't want to get undressed today not a problem that way we're not like here's again get undressed see you later <laughs> Expectation management is, is key. Another thing to consider is kind of ties back into the support person setting yourself up for success. What are you willing to do that day? If you said, hey, you know, I do wanna, I do wanna do an exam. Okay, so how are we gonna set your body and your brain up best to deal with an exam that day? What distraction techniques are gonna help you? Are you going to want some headphones? You don't want to hear anything? Don't want to talk? You need some headphones. Is it going to be music? Is it going to be, um, you know, scrolling through videos on your phone? Is it going to be um, something funny, something serious? Is it just breathing techniques? What, having that prep so you're not trying to like figure it out in the last moment as you're like getting up in stirrups, like what music should I listen to? Let's have that prepped and ready headphones or just asking, hey, can I play some music? Totally fine. Or um, is it something more like tactile? Like you can, uh, I love the squeezy balls. Helpful. If, if you don't have a squeezy ball, like the stress ball, and your office doesn't have one, it's always really helpful to just clench your fists and relax them. Clench them and relax them. That gives you something to focus on, so it's a nice distraction technique. And this is actually going to keep your blood flowing so that you don't have a vagal response. So this happens when I always compare it to like, you see the videos of the like strongman competitions and the guy like deadlifts a billion pounds and then passes out. <laughs> that happens in medical situations too. You bear down, unbeknownst to you in a stressful moment, you bear down, you hold your breath and all the blood shunts down to your legs get super dizzy and lightheaded, you feel flushed and sweaty, and sometimes you pass out, <laughs> that happens, but if you clench your fists, relax them, 
clench them, relax them. It can keep that blood flowing so you don't vagal as quickly or at all. Now I tell people, if you get your whole arm involved, like really clench your whole arm, get those biceps going, clench and relax, clench and relax. And if you have that stress ball, it helps. If you don't, you can just use your fists and it can be really helpful. It helped me after my IUD insertion. <laughs> so 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, sometimes sniffing alcohol swabs can help with nausea. So if, if medical stuff just kind of upsets your stomach, makes you nauseous, you can get alcohol swabs. Um, they'll be like cleansing alcohol swabs or named a couple different things. You can get them over the counter at your pharmacy by like the first aid section. If you're like, oh yeah, I'm a nauseous person. Okay, those are just good to have in your purse, in your car, everywhere. Just a little sniff of that. Okay, helps with some nausea. But of course, your um, you know, your healthcare provider will have those too. So you can always let them know, like, do you have those swabs, like those alcohol swabs that helps with nausea sometimes? Oh yeah, sure, they'll give you a few. That'll help, that's easy. The other thing, it sounds silly, but like come in with a full bladder and a full stomach, unless they specifically told you to fast. Full bladder, full stomach. Full bladder, you never know when they're gonna need a urine sample. And being hydrated is helpful, you know, get your blood pressure at the appropriate place. Um, you just feel better, <laughs> you don't have a headache and everything else. And a full stomach, if again, they told you not here, it's okay not to fast. Um, because people, I always, say, I always say, people will come in at five o'clock in the afternoon and they'll say, I was so nervous. I didn't drink or eat anything all day. Like, oh great, we're gonna pass out. Like here's a ginger ale and a granola bar. We'll try our best. So don't, do not set yourself up for low blood sugar and pass out. So two other things. Plan what you want to do for the rest of your day. Is it going to be best for you to go back to work and be distracted? Okay, that's one technique. Or it's going to be best to do it on a day that you're off. It's going to be best to go home and relax. Because what's normal after an exam that... Um, can be stressful for you, it could be triggering for you. It's normal for you to have a lot more emotions that day, a lot of different emotions, to feel a little bit more out of control, to feel more, just like a little more raw. Your emotions are a little bit closer to the surface. So scheduling your pap smear, you know, right before a big meeting might not be the best idea. Um, but figuring out, okay, what are some things that I could potentially feel after this? And how am I going to put strategies in place to deal with that? Do I need to just go home and relax? Like, or hey, I don't have the luxury of going home. I do have to go back to work. Can I schedule this on a slow day at work? Or, you know, on a day where I don't have a meeting to rush to? Or can I confide in someone at work that, yeah, you know, this is kind of a rough day for me. Like, if you can just take the hard questions for me, or hey, I'm, I'm gonna be kind of quiet today. I just had a rough morning. Don't really wanna talk about it. So just setting yourself up so you're not having to have a rough day on top of having to deal with the terrible exam, so. Um, this might, uh, this only applies to really gynecology appointments, but it, it would be helpful. Um, there are many people who struggle with the speculum exam, and I can get like really into detail on like, the specifics of the speculum exam, but one thing that could be helpful is when you're calling to make your appointment, like we talked about, you're gonna call, so you need all the details, you need to ask all your questions. One question to ask is if you really, really struggle with the speculum exam, they're always really painful, maybe they haven't been able to do one before because you couldn't tolerate the pain, that's okay. Ask, do you all have pediatric speculums? Because if you just ask, oh, I need a small speculum, they're gonna assume that you need the regular small size. That's what we always try to use. We never try to use the big ones if, if we can help it. Sometimes we have to, but we really try not to. We try and go with the small regular size, but many offices will have our pediatric speculums. And they're about the size of my pinky finger. So very small. I've had many patients where they couldn't tolerate a pap in the past. We have a pediatric speculum and they do just fine or they do much better. So asking, do you have those? If they say, oh no, definitely not. Okay, you might be fine without it, no problem, but it could be worth maybe calling one more place and saying, hey, do you guys have those? Just to you know, give you the confidence moving forward that that's an option that you'll have there. So 
talked about a lot of things. Hopefully some of it was helpful. My last thing that I tell patients no matter what is that if you have to come see us, maybe you have to do a super fun exam that you don't enjoy, you have to get up in stirrups, you have to deal with a speculum, if you have to do any of those things, then you deserve to treat yourself. Current recommendations are chocolate, coffee, or ice cream. Or all three. But this is definitely a treat yourself, treat yourself kind of moment. I'm big on treats. <laughs> so plan a way to treat yourself. And it sounds silly, it sounds you know, trivial, and I have plenty of patients who are like, I think I'm fine, like, I don't need a treat, or like, I already had coffee today, I feel like I'm good. But, treats are okay, and it's okay to have something to look forward to. Like, once you reach a goal, are you just like, whatever, fine? No, like, if these exams are really tough for you, then pat yourself on the back once you've done it. Like, give yourself an attaboy, get yourself a treat, go get that fancy coffee, you know, you know, go to Trader Joe's and don't make dinner and eat some delicious something from the Trader Joe's bakery section, whatever. But it's okay to treat yourself because you did something difficult for you, you conquered that, you reached a goal, and now you can treat yourself. That's okay. So I like to give people permission to treat themselves. Very important. So I hope some of that was helpful. Um, you can let me know in the comments if there was anything that you feel like I left out, like what helped you get through a tough appointment? Um, what distraction techniques are best for you or um, strategies or questions that helped you get through a tough exam? Um, and of course, if you want different types of content, put that in the comments too. Share with your friends, like, subscribe, all the things. And of course, remember that there is no such thing as an awkward question.